What's up, yo? It's your boy, eBay Fight Predictions, and I got a special video for y'all. I'm going to be doing this uh, for six weeks straight, all the way up to UFC 260. That's going to be my top five threats for each weight division's champion. Uh, but yeah, this week we start off with uh, 125, uh, the males division. And yeah, it's kind of hard not to talk about these divisions. I, I want to make a video like this so, you know, when we get ready to the, you know, heavyweight fight, like we've got some content for y'all. But, man, let's get to it, man. Davis and Figueredo, I, that guy's he's looking unstoppable, man. He, oh, my God. And how can you not like the guy, man? <laughs> you know, he's a, he's a shoesy chef. Uh, he's a, you know, he's a fashion icon. You know, he's a, he's a good dude. Um, but, and what he's able to do in that octagon is nothing but impressive. His boxing, uh, his switch kicks. You know, his spinning heel kicks to the body, everything he can do there. The, uh, the fucking power that he has in his hands, his jiu-jitsu, the guard play. You know, it is what it is. But, man, that guy is talented. But he does have a really good division. 125 is fucking heating up. But, yeah, let's get to it. Let's get to the top five threats to Davison Figueredo. And at number five, we got to start, uh, start off with De uh, David Dvorak. I think David, his boxing is you know it's it's really he's i i you know i had him as a dark horse uh you know of last year one of my old videos of 2020 um that i made but man we, what he was able to do to jordan espinoza he kind of shut him down um obviously yeah jordan espinoza is not uh davison figueredo but a lot of the guys that have challenged davison right like alex perez right um have beaten jordan espinoza Right, so that's a good guy to have on your, you know, your record. You know, that you you are on the likes of Alex Perez, right? You know, you are a contender. Uh, but yeah, he he looked really really impressive in there. I like his boxing. I like his composure. He's he looks like a, a legitimate threat. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. But at number four, we got Alejandro Pantoja. Pantoja is a fucking monster, bro. What he was able to do to Manel Cape in his last fight, oh my God, he looked. You know, he, he looked good, man. He looked like he came back. Um, I, I love the fight. I love the fight. I saw the first fight with Davis and Figueredo. That was a fun, fun fight. Pantoja really challenged Davis, and he was able to eat his best shots. But um, it was a barn burner, man. You know, obviously Pantoja uh, got knocked down a few times in that fight. But I feel like the Pantoja we saw against Cape was a, a completely different guy. You know, he provided a lot of you know, different things with his kicks, you know, he looked like just a, a better version, and I feel like, you know, if he throws that at um, Davison, I think it's going to be really, really impressive, and it's going to be really fun to, to see uh, how a rematch would be, you know, because, you know, Pantoja, you know, even though he lost, he he gave, um, you know, he, he gave a good fight in that, uh, in that fight, and it was, a, that was a while back, I think that was UFC 240, uh, so yeah, it is what it is. Uh, and at number three, I gotta go with Oscar Askarov, a guy that actually has a win over Pantoja. Um, this guy's wrestling uh, and his jab, I mean, has just been super, super, super impressive. I mean, oh my God, he's been looking amazing. Uh, what he was able to do to Tim Elliott, you know, basically knocked him out standing. Now Tim has, you know, a, a granite chin, but man, I thought Tim was gonna die in that fight for a second. Um, you know, he, what he's been able to do, I, I feel like if he was to match up with Davison, I think the wrestling would be really, really interesting, uh, interesting to see. I feel like Davison's jiu-jitsu would, um, cancel out, you know, which is something, uh, to think about, but, you know, it's, it's a hard, man, it's a hard fight, uh, to sell at this point, uh, you know, I feel like Oscar Askarov needs one more fight. Uh, and I think if he, you know, he gets that, he can really prove himself. But, uh, you know, his win over Pantoja was good. Uh, he did have a draw with Brandon Moreno, you know, and I, I kind of felt like he lost that fight. But at the end of the day, he, he was super tough in there. I, I will give him that. Uh, but I just, you know, even though I named all three of these guys, I kind of don't see them beating uh, Davis and Figueredo, you know, but the top two. I can actually really, really see it. And at number two, I got Cody No Love Garbrandt, man. Um, I think 
I know some people don't like Cody, and I think some people think he's a little overrated. But, man, he has one of the fastest hands in the game, man. And hearing him talk on the Joe Rogan podcast uh, just recently, I, I think he he's looking like a monster right now. And, you know, the way he's talking about Davison and the holes he sees in his game, Cody, he can do a lot of bad things to Davison. You know, if you look at what Cody was able to do, Dominic Cruz, you know, we've seen Davison have problems with his gas tank, right? But, um, you know, it's Cody could do some things. But, um, I, I, you know, but at the same time, Davison also can do some things to him, too. Like, that, you know, Pedro Munoz loss wasn't too long ago, you know? Like, <laughs> you can't, like, I get it, you know, Cody, you know, he's a new version of himself, but it's kind of hard to overcome things, uh, you know, habits that you have, uh, you know, in your fight style, and it's, those are some of the hardest things to overcome, um, and we're going to find out if he if he really did overcome that, if he ends up fighting Jose Aldo or if he ends up waiting and ends up fighting Davis and Figueredo. Figueredo has a piston of a right hand, man. Um, and he has a good chin. But uh, I, lo- I love the fight, though. It's an awesome, awesome fight. Uh, just two guys, two gunslingers. It's, it's a good scrap, you know. Um, I, I don't know. It's just something that just interests me about that fight so much. And even the, the, you know, well, actually that doesn't apply, but uh, I was about to, you know, talk about something else, but what really interests me about this fight is just the weight cut, you know, Cody talks about how much is it like, you know, he's not really a big guy for 135, but I really want to see how well his body can adjust to that weight class and Davison just might take advantage of the moment and uh, take him out. But if Cody can beat Davison Figueredo, he I mean, he puts himself in a, a whole entire different class now, you know. Uh, we might look at Cody a lot different as, you know, as what we perceived him to be. And it, it'll be really, really interesting to see uh, what happens. But at number one, I got to go. Brandon Moreno is the number one threat to Davison. Even though I respect Cody Garbrandt and I think that is a 50-50 fight with Davison, I still would pick Davison Figueredo, right? But this one, I mean, oh my God, this is Brandon Moreno. I I ain't a pick Davis and Figueroa. I'll be honest. But the amount of people that disrespected Brandon Moreno in this fight was insane. And I, I guess you can put me uh, in that list. Um, but I think Brandon has, I mean, a, a phenomenal chance to go out there and impose a really good game plan. His wrestling is good, uh, and his cardio is good. He's not he you know he's not intimidated by Davison's power. He has a real legitimate chance. I feel like you know this could end up being like John Jones versus Gustafsson, and you know and obviously you know John ended up destroying Gustafsson in the rematch, right? But that first fight was oh my god, it was so close, man. That was a great fight. Um, and same thing with here in Davison and Brandon Moreno. I think those guys match up really really well with each other, and. It's hard, man. You know, some people felt like Brandon won, uh, won that first fight. You know, some people gave him the second round. Uh, wh- when I was watching it live, I kind of felt like Brandon might have edged it out. I watched it again, and I was like, oh, that second round is way too close. You know, I watched it. It's like, man, those takedowns were good, but uh, it's kind of uh, that's kind of hard to give him that round uh, with all the damage that Davison was doing on the feet. You know, um. It was really interesting to, and the commentary was a little biased. I will say that it was a little biased for Brandon. Uh, I don't know why they were super biased. There's no real uh, relationship there, so I, it's kind of hard to call him biased. But um, I mean, Brandon is a monster, though. Like you, you know, uh, what that kid was able to accomplish after getting cut and coming back. You know, obviously he had only one fight. But, you know, what he did to Oscar Oskarov, uh, what he did to Juicio Formiga, Kai Car France. The guy's a good fighter, man. And he's a fucking scrapper. Uh, I can't wait for them to do that rematch. I think that fight is going to be, I mean, bananas. And really, it's going to be very pivotal in the feather, you know, not the featherweight, the flyweight division. To see who ends up winning that fight between him and uh, Davis and Figueredo. 
But uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. These are my top five threats to Davis and Figueredo in the flyweight division. Next week, we will be doing the bantamweight division and Peter Yan. I cannot wait. It's going to be really, really awesome. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll be doing this uh, for about six weeks, you know, until we get to heavyweight. I will do the female ones if you guys want it. I'm, I'm not tripping. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram. Don't forget to follow me on my uh, my Twitter. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, uh, and comment, and go click the notification button and share this video. Love y'all and goodbye.